Blue 42! Blue 42! Omaha! Omaha! Hut! Hut! Hike! Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd uh, here at Bicious RV and it's like... I feel like I'm getting reacquainted with an old friend after we haven't seen each other for a couple years. I remember uh, before these things were called the hike what they used to look like and the same basic floor plan is there but the improvements they've made and the evolution of this product it's it's like uh, it, it, it's it's like a, a caterpillar becoming a butterfly watching how this has happened over the years it's really cool and my hats off to the folks at Winnebago the fit and the finish on this is excellent now um, this is the hike series here is a little more specialized product this is something you could certainly use it in the parks and there's a lot of people who are like I'm just looking for something that's really well built I don't want something big I want something that is small and easy to tow that is this it's got a, a, a higher riding tire package also the fact it's lightweight and only six and a half foot wide so if you've got a smaller vehicle it's not so intimidating you can kind of still see around it which is really nice but at the same time like the name hike it's it's giving you an idea of more than just uh, a name it's giving you an idea of like a little bit of the lifestyle that this is tapping into um if i, I think this is a great base camp camper like there's uh a, there's over representation of these off-road campers out there um things that really aren't that is not what this is this is something if you get off the road maybe some light trails and then you park and you're gonna you know go traveling you're gonna go biking hiking uh fishing you know, go Bishin, man. Give, give us a call here. And uh, it's that lifestyle. That's what the feeling is with this one. Um, somebody asked earlier, you know, about the roll cage. We're going to tell you all about that. That is actually the exoskeleton. You know, it's got things like this crazy box on the front. What is all that? We're going to get through all of that for you. And I would love to hear from our longtime fans. What do you think about the evolution of this product? Now, so much of what you see on this channel you know, it, it, it's bigger stuff, big trailers, lots of slides, fifth wheels, all that. This is not that. So I, I uh, you know, for regular viewers and, and commenters, first of all, thank you. I appreciate you guys. But secondly, I, I really have to kind of advise you. You got to look at this one through a different lens. This isn't, you know, a, a big giant luxury full time and fifth wheel or something like that. No, it is a very nicely put together, excellent fit and finish. F finish? <laughs> finish premium grade trailer but not everybody wants a giant monster rig some people want okay look i want i only want to ever buy one more rv i don't want to have to replace this thing but i don't want a big giant monster what do you got for me you know if you're looking to do uh something a little unconventional this really might be uh you know right up the alley for you now a couple things that are a little interesting here uh, that shelf over the bed, because of the curvature of the front nose of this, they couldn't exactly throw like a big cabinet or something up there. Although I really do appreciate how they maintain those crossbreeds windows, especially since I see a little trailer like this trekking off the beaten path a little more often. It's just kind of weird to me how you have like that USB plug down below then the household outlet above. But at the same time, I think the USB plugs could be more useful for folks charging their phones. Um... And it's in a position that I think what you could do is plug in your cord, have the cord dangling down while you're messing with your phone at night, and then you can just kind of reach up or sit up a little bit and set your phone on the shelf and have it all out of the way. To me, uh, that that's kind of what that is. Now, I'm looking at this bed here, and I'm, I'm eyeballing the size. The trick with this is the trailer's only six and a half foot wide. It's a super narrow body camper, so it's real easy towing. But it's like, it's kind of skewing my perception. Let me measure this real quick. Sorry about that. Normally, I'm pretty good at, like, eyeballing stuff like that. So, uh, what I kind of sus uh, suspected, since this is only six and a half foot wide, is that it does need to be a 74-inch bed. So, it, it is 60 inches wide, which is nice, but that is, uh, in normal terms, a camp queen bed. There just literally is not enough room wall to wall in this thing to put a true queen. Now, again, I fully acknowledge that, like, that means that one person might have to climb over the other person to get to bed, or if you don't go to bed at the same time, that poses problems for some people. This is not for everybody, but if you're roaming alone, or if you don't mind being cozy with one another, if you understand that we're camping, and you say, you know, we're not staying at the Ritz, this is, you know, not unreasonable, I think. Now, it also occurs to me, I think if I don't mention this, there is, uh, 
there's certain things if I don't mention, people assume the worst, which I think is just human nature. I don't fault them for that. Um, the big black grate is our furnace intake, and those vents are the furnace exhaust. So, yes, this does have a propane heater. <laughs> so I'm sitting on the bed to get the next shot, and I look down, and when I came here, these shoes were white. I didn't research the venue. This is, this is totally on me, but shoes wash, no big deal. My pants have been covering the Adidas logo. Uh, that's how white these shoes used to be. <laughs> anyway, looking around here. Um, again, it's it's a camper really designed for solo use or a little cozy couples camper. Um, there, It's not like it's got the greatest amount of storage in the world. They had to get a little creative, but they did a nice job. Kind of borrowing a page from sort of looks class B motorhome Winnebago inspired. Uh, that little, you see the little curvature at the bottom of the door? That curvature portion actually hangs down past the door, so that's kind of your handle. It's easy to grab. Also, obviously, you see it stays up out of the way without assistance, and it's all pocket screwed. And like I said, the fit and the finish in here has been really fantastic. Um, and there is easy access storage down below the, uh, the dinette doors. Pardon my little shoes peeking into the frame here. I'm trying to keep them off the bed because, you know, I don't feel like stomping on someone else's furniture. Now, as long as we're looking down, carpetless, ventless, easy cleaning. So sweep it out, swift her up, roll hide. Now, there is a slide in this camper. It doesn't really look like it from in here, but... That is a, uh, a kitchen slide, and we will see that close for road mode, and what you're going to find is she re, uh, remains very travel uh, friendly and travel accessible. Um, this, by the way, over here, this is a gas electric absorption fridge. And in a lot of the bigger stuff, like you've heard me specifically, I've been very vocal how I really like 12 volt fridges, but campers like this that can spend a little bit more time off grid, the absorption fridge, because of the way that it is very um, friendly to battery reserves uh, has remained very popular for like the off-grid crowd. That is a convection microwave, by the way. So you can do a little bit of baking in that. You got, you know, you got to make biscuits for two in the morning. You can make that happen. More of that beautiful flip open cabinet space there. And let me crawl my way out of this bed to show you there's a little more counter space than you might realize. Because I've noticed, at least my eyes, I tend to look for the first object and then I stop. There's a whole extra six inches of counter space behind that. And in a little camper like this, every inch matters for sure. And that's also really nice that they left us some handy appliance outlets back there. And I really like that, uh, uh, that light cascading down from under that cabinet right there. Now, one of the other things that's really cool is tucked away back here in this corner, long reach, I should have done this uh, a different way, handy little uh, uh, wireless charge pad, which uh, is, is really nice here. This is all sealed edge pressed membrane countertops. Uh, you'll see that it's the same thing as on the dinette here. In a little camper, having a couple big drawers like that, I think, frankly, is a pretty nice find. Also, the single kind of biggest interior cavity in the kitchen would be this one down here. So that might be like your bigger pots or pans or something like that. But, holy crap, this is like, I mean, when I say heavy duty, I mean, it's physically heavy. Check the thickness on this and stainless again very material premium trailer i mean holy, look at this thing like when you get in one of these like grab it. it's it's a if this is a chunk i mean just ah ah why did i do that and okay question does the insert go into the sink like this with the finger pulled down here or does it go in like this with the finger pull up by the faucet i feel like i like it better that way now, one thing I thought was a little interesting is the TV is flat mounted. It does not pivot, but at the same time, it's not like it's not visible. You know, it's pretty darn easy to see. It's also on a quick release V mount, uh, which makes me think you'd be able to add a mount outside the camper to, uh, to put it out there. Now, this doesn't have like a single centralized command panel, but like all of our buttons and switches and everything are right here. Interestingly, like someone's gonna ask, why is this vented at the top? And the answer is because if I want to open the vent and turn the fan on without opening the door so that, you know, when you are boondocking or whatever, you can keep one of these windows cracked and you can keep uh, some airflow moving through it. You can do that. You can just reach over and click that. You may have also noticed the switch right below that. It says tank heater. 
guess what that does? <laughs> this camper has holding tank heaters down below to help give you that extra uh, protection. And this is an interesting thing Winnebago does a lot. They have a power disconnect a lot of times for things like slides and awnings so that you don't have to worry about parasitic load eating away at your battery. Now, if you look over here, you see that we have a small pantry space, but you see the rest of that wall was wasted. It was actually used in the bathroom. We'll get there in just a second. First thing I want to point out before we get there, though, and I really should have pulled it down a little bit, is that they are putting the full shade in the entry door. However, like uh, a lot of people say, and it is true, like I'm glad that they're putting the shade in the door, but you have to open the door, close the screen, adjust the shade, and then close the door. And by the way, there's these little clips right here. You can unclip that, flip it, and make it open from the bottom up. And what's cool about that is like most of the time when you're sitting down low in the camper, you maintain privacy. But if somebody knocks on your door, you can peekaboo peek them, and you can see who's knocking on your door and still maintain your privacy, which I think is kind of cool. Now, I uh, was first introduced to Winnebago's travel trailers when they first got back into travel trailers. And back then, this was called the Winnie Drop. And then it became the Mini Drop. And since they've added the exoskeleton, made it a little beefier, uh, it's become the Hike, which I think is kind of cool. Kind of, you know, you want to go for a hike, you get a hike. It, you know, makes sense. But this one's claim to fame. Uh, these campers used to almost always come with uh, a wet bath where the toilet was in the shower, quite literally. And don't get me wrong, this is not the world's biggest shower. Um, like, let me show you the kind of headroom that we're looking at right here. It's not the world's biggest camper. These are the things that just, they just go with the territory, you know? Um, but this was the one, the only one, basically, uh, from Winnebago that had a full separate uh, dry bath. Good counter space in here. They've added more storage than they used to have. I like the way this has been rearranged. The toilet space, surprisingly, doesn't suck. There's, I mean, you know, if, if you're wider, if you're longer legged like me, you're going to fit. And remember how I said they didn't waste that space. The door in the cabinetry matches so nicely, you don't realize there's a huge chunk of space right there. All right, now in road mode, if you're traveling, you pull over, you stop, you the slide is closed, this is what you look at. Now, it's a little tight, but you can navigate through here. And what's cool about this slide, since it's not a seating slide... It is fully functional even when retracted. The only thing you really lose out on in this RV with the slide closed is the television. I don't know how important that's going to be. But also consider the fact this is only six and a half uh, foot wide. Even if you park in a normal parking space, if you park more toward the right hand side of it, you can open the slide out and still not stick out any further than an eight foot wide camper would. So uh, this is one of the most travel accessible models you're gonna find. And there's a surprising amount of stuff to cover on this little trailer. Like up front here, you're like, what is this box? That is actually your propane enclosure. And pardon the dust here, but um, what's cool here is there's a little extra cargo space and I'm like, hmm, that might be good for like wheel chocks or something like that. Like I can see that having a couple different purposes. That's pretty cool. These ride on a, uh, a Norco uh, chassis, which is like a huck bolted frame. It's a little bit lighter, but equally strong. A thinner gauge of a, a higher grade material to maintain its integrity, which I think is really important here. And that's what's cool about this. The way the bigger Winnebago's, like, you know, so you go from the hike to the micro mini and then over there up to the full mini and then eventually voyage they're all built the same uh like you've got the uh the the asdell walls um uh oh wow it's been a while i'm tapping the memory banks i believe the sidewalls these are cnc routed for that machine precision down to a thousandth of an inch holy crap now let's uh address the elephant in the room why is this thing wearing a, uh, a football face guard? <laughs> and no, it's not a roll cage in case you go down a mountain. Uh, at that point, <laughs> Jesus already took the wheel. Um, this is the exoskeleton, and it provides a couple different benefits. So first of all, and absolutely most importantly, you remember uh, National Lampoon's vacation when they had to stramp, uh, strap Aunt Edna to the roof of the wagon. Well, you could do that here. Um, actually, maybe not most importantly. I'm not saying, I'm just saying. M more importantly, perhaps, you wanna 
put bike racks, you want to strap kayaks down or anything like that, you could do that. But here's another thing. You guys ever go down uh, like uh, trails or pathways or something like that where there's low hanging tree branches? Well, you don't want them poking your trailer. You don't want them bashing into stuff. It, it, it extends off the RV. So it's acting like a protection buffer, basically. It's like a it's like a bumper. Now, similarly, down below, you got kind of those little brush guards right there. So it's it's different. It's unconventional. It's not for everybody, but it is surprisingly strong. The trick is, I don't know how I can really properly demonstrate that on video with my silly chicken arms and lady fingers, but I think if you saw this in person, you could you can legit spider climb up that. Actually, let's look up there. And this gives us a good view of a couple things. Um, first of all, you've got the uh, a Go Power 100 watt flex panel up here. Now with the exoskeleton, they couldn't do a raised panel like they do on a lot of the other stuff. Now, uh, I want to acknowledge, depending on what you do with cargo, if you start shading that thing, you're not gonna get a whole lot of solar out of it. And 100 watts isn't a lot of solar, it's a simple battery tender, but remember you're looking at a two-way fridge here, so if you are off grid, you're not using a whole lot of 12 volt typically anyway. The other thing is what you don't see up here. Did you notice how we've got the fiberglass on the nose and it sweeps all the way to the back? These do not have rubberized roofs. It is a one piece front to back uh, skin, basically. Now, that doesn't mean it's no maintenance. You don't have to clean and, con like you don't have to condition a, uh, uh, what do I wanna say? Uh, uh, rubberized roof but you do still have seals that you need to maintain so so please kind of remember you do still have some upkeep here but less really now I gripe about it all the time I'm not gonna spend a lot of time about it I don't like the speaker position I don't like that I wish that was down lower I think that they could probably hide those maybe you know inside one of the dinette bases or something like that but you ready for a surprise this is something that the old ones never used to have enclosed underbelly and tank heaters. That is a sweet one-two punch combo. Um, the big fender flares here, uh, again, not, as it says, that's not for stepping. There's plenty of other things that you can step on on this one, obviously. Now, as I back up here, just again, like the bigger Winnebago's, you've got uh, reverse lighting in the taillights, which is fantastic. And another upgrade they added to these, which required, you know, an extra chunk of weight, but it gives you a 300 pound rated rear accessory hitch. That is awesome for a trailer like this. So you could have a kayak strapped to it, front, back, or top, or one of each or two of it. I don't know, I don't know your life. You could have bikes on the back, um, a small generator tray off the back. You know, depending on what you're doing, there's a lot of things you can do. And I'm gonna slide my way forward to get out of these people's way. Thank you for your patience and tolerance, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I wanted to get you over here on the uh, face of the slide itself because there's actually the outside shower mounted on the slide. Now that doesn't provide any significant benefit other than the fact that you don't have to go crawling down to get it, which is something I certainly appreciate. So why go for a stroll when you could go for a hike? <laughs> so stupid. Thank you for tolerating me as always. Thank you so much, folks. I'm really eager to hear what you think, especially our longtime viewers on this channel who uh, remember the Winnie Drops and the Mini Drops of years past. And what do you think about the newest iteration? What do you think about the... I heard some folks going, why does it have a roll cage? <laughs> Let me know what you think about the new generation. And uh, if this is your first time joining us, if you like this thing, but this isn't the right floor plan, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We got other ones coming. Big, small, in between. We're gonna try to give it all to you here at Bish's RV. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.